Hi there, so today we are going to look at simple machines, okay? And in our simple machines, we're going to talk about some of the basics of the simple machines and also mechanical advantage, okay? So first we're going to look at lever, wheel and axle, and then a pulley, all right? So Simple machines are mechanisms that manipulate the magnitude of force and distance. So essentially, force and distance kind of balance each other out and you just trade one for the other. So if you want to reduce your force, you would have to move that force or spread that out over a larger distance and then vice versa, right? So you also have inclined plane or commonly known as a ramp, but it's only a simple machine if you're going up. It's just a ramp if you're going down. A wedge, similar to an ax, and then a screw, which combines a few different things. Okay, so let's talk about mechanical advantage. That is the ratio of the magnitude of resistance and effort forces. Okay, so basically, how much effort you apply to something and how much resistance or how much that item or object weighs. Okay, so it's also the ratio of distance traveled by the effort and the resistance force. So when you calculate these mechanical advantage ratios, you can manipulate things like speed, distance, force, and function. Okay. So, in this example, if a mechanical advantage of 4 to 1, what does this tell us about a mechanism? Okay, it tells us the magnitude of the force. It tells us that the effort force is four times less than the magnitude of the resistance force. So, if I have a box in this case that weighs 400 pounds, if I have a mechanical advantage of 4 to 1, I only have to apply 100 pounds of effort in order to move that 400 pounds of resistance. Okay, so it's the distance traveled by the force. So here, the effort force is four times greater the distance of the resistance force. Okay, so I'm trading one for the other. So if I'm moving the box up 10 feet, I have to make it travel 40 feet horizontally. So I'm trading distance for force. Okay, then we come to the concept of work. So work is the force applied on an object times the distance the object travels parallel to the force, or work equals force times distance. So if I apply a 20 pound force over 10 feet, then I'm creating 200 foot pounds of force. Okay, as the animation shows. All right, work is the product of the effort times the distance traveled. So that's going to be the same regardless of the mechanical advantage. All right, so one for the ratios is a magic number. If the mechanical advantage is greater than one, then you need less effort force to overcome the resistance, but you need that same proportion greater distance. So once again, you're trading effort for resistance. Okay, same thing if the MA is less than one, then you need a greater effort force in order to overcome the distance or sorry, the resistance, and then you need less distance to overcome the resistance force, okay? Mechanical advantage can never be less than or equal to zero. So ideal mechanical advantage, as the name suggests, is theory-based. So friction loss is not taken into consideration. And it's the ratio of distance traveled by effort and resistance force. Okay, so IMA deals with distances. IMA equals DE divided by DR. Okay, I'm a deer. 
You're going to be hearing that a lot as we discuss our simple machines. Okay, AMA frictions are taken into account, and that only has to do with forces. So if IMA has to do with distances, AMA has to do with forces. So AMA free. AMA equals FR, which is the resistance force, divided by FE, which is the effort force. Okay, so machine that has a mechanical advantage greater than one may be a windmill. All right, less than one, um, possibly workout. Again, if you have a workout machine, you want to be putting forth more effort because then you get more gains. Okay, so let's talk about our mechanic, our simple machines. Lever, rigid bar used to exert a pressure, sustain a weight at one point of its length by the application at a second point in turning on a fulcrum. Okay, so here you have three kinds of lever. We call those first, second, and third class levers. So it all depends on where the effort and resistance forces are in relation to the fulcrum. First class lever, fulcrum is located in between the effort and resistance force. Okay, so um, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. It can be tilted towards one side or the other, thinking like a crowbar, something like that, um, or a seesaw, etc. So first class lever, the fulcrum is in between the effort and resistance. Second class lever, the fulcrum is located at one end of the lever. So think about a wheelbarrow, okay? And the resistance is in between the effort and the fulcrum. Okay, so when I pick up on a wheelbarrow, the load is in between my effort and where the fulcrum is or where the lever is turning. Third class lever is the reverse of that. So once again, the fulcrum is located at one end, but this time the resistance force is outside of the effort force. So the effort is in between the resistance and the fulcrum. Okay. Next, we need to talk about moments. So a moment is a turning effect of a force around a point equal to the magnitude times the perpendicular distance. So you can think of this as a rotational force. Again, it has the same formula as work, but remember, work is parallel. Moments are perpendicular. Okay? So if I want to calculate a moment acting on the lever, I need to do the distance from the fulcrum to my effort multiplied by my pounds of effort. So 15 times five and a half, okay, would give me 82 and a half inch pounds. All right, so when the sum of all moments on a level equals zero, the lever is in rotational equilibrium. Okay, we'll get into that in a, more in a minute. So you can have counterclockwise moments, all right, which go around this way clockwise moments which go around this way okay so lever moment calculation again just a more advanced calculation than before because you're taking into account both sides or both ends of the lever okay so there we go all right so a lever IMA again you're just going to multiply or sorry divide the effort distance by the resistance distance again from the fulcrum okay lever ama ama free all right here you take the resistance force divided by the effort force okay 32 divided by 16 the answer is 2 all right so efficiency, AMA divided by IMA times 100. Okay, nothing is ever 100% efficient due to friction and also some outside forces. Okay, so in this case, the efficiency would be 82%. All right, wheel and axle. Lever arm fixed to a shaft called an axle. Now, 
what the wheel is and what the axle is is depending on where the force is being applied. So for example, on a steering wheel, okay, the wheel is the larger circumference because you are applying the effort to the wheel. In the example of your drive shaft or turning the car's tires down by the road, the effort is being applied to the axle. Okay? So there we go. All right? Again, circumference is what we need to take into account or diameter better what we need to take into account when we think about wheel and axle. So when we're looking at the IMA of a wheel and axle, it is the diameter of both of those. All right? So there's the example. Okay? Again, you need to pay attention to if the axle is driving the wheel or if the wheel is driving the axle. Okay? Am afraid, again, where is the force being applied? Okay? The effort force is typically done by a person or by an engine or something like that. The resistance force is the other side of that. So if you have a car drive shaft, the effort is happening at the axle and the resistance is happening at the wheel or the tire. If you have a steering wheel, then that would be reversed. Okay, pulleys are pretty simple. Lever consisting of a wheel with a groove with ropes. Basically what you need to know about pulleys is the mechanical advantage of a pulley is the same as the number of strands in the pulley or in the block and tackle system. Okay, fixed pulley, movable pulley. Again here, two strands, IMA of two, one strand, IMA of one. Okay, combination, again, number of strands. That's all you need to know about pulleys. Um, we're not gonna get into compound machines today. Um, so that gives you a head start on the first three simple machines. We'll come back later with the others.